Yeah. But I just worked out yeah, right. sure you that, this that was my bad. Um, but uh yeah, I just I didn't uh, yeah, I just gave you extra yeah. putting in the effort. And more extra credit if you did the whole thing, some extra credit if you did part of it. Uh so yeah. <laughs> Okay, so it feels like, especially after the weekend that I had, um, and I, I've known for almost a month, because AJ called to ask us for our blessing almost a month ago, and I told nobody. I would not be able to do that. Not one person. And do you know how many times I wanted to say this? But I didn't. I didn't tell anyone. So not even my sisters. Um, so I'm very proud of myself. And my whole family's proud of me too. So, <laughs> anyone who has as many words to say as I do has problems with secrets. So, um, but I pray for them. Um, so, uh, so it seems like last week was years ago at this point. But uh, we're going to go real quickly through what we already talked about with this story of Jesus and Nicodemus. We're going to move on uh, and maybe get it done today. It might have to go until tomorrow, uh, but. We'll, uh, we'll get that done. Uh, and then um, I have the quiz in case there's time for it, but I'm not sure there will be. Uh, so here is this passage again. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for, for no one can do these signs, think miracles, when, when John writes that, that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? <clears throat> truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness of what to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man, uh, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Make sure you're paying attention up there. Uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to um, condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him, whoever believes in him is uh, uh, whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he did not believe, has not believed in the name of his only Son of God. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out from God. So, um, we're going to... Yes? On verse 11, when it says, Our testimony is like Trinity or like Jesus and the disciples? Um, I, I believe so. Um, it might be at this point, um, but it's possible. That was, and I was just about to say that I believe that these two stories, that, that the one that we're in right now, Nicodemus, and, and the next one, which is the woman at the well, uh, the Samaritan woman, are so important for understanding who Jesus is and, and his ministry um, that we will do an in search uh, of Jesus uh, for both of those. Uh, because I think there's some things here that the, the curriculum doesn't uh, recognize. One of which is 
what is this whole thing? Like, is, who's, who's saying all of this? And I might blow your mind, and I, you might try to get me fired when I talk to you about that, um, but I think there's something different going on with beginning with uh, verse 16, uh, that most uh, famous verse uh, in the Bible. So uh, we'll talk about that when we get to the search. We'll go deeper into this story when we get to So what we talked about already is the man Nicodemus, and he was a member of the Sanhedrin. Uh, he was a ruler of the Jews, is the way John puts it. That means that he was one of those 70 most powerful men in Israel. Uh, he shows both cowardice and courage throughout the Gospel of John. Um, and uh, he was educated but spiritually ignorant. He didn't understand what Jesus was saying. I'm not sure he could have, no matter who he was. Uh, but he didn't understand what Jesus was talking. Um, now, this is where we, we left off, that as miracles as evidence. And we're going to talk about, uh, talk about that, uh, because I believe that, that miracles are, uh, make poor evidence of, um, of Jesus. So, uh, but, but he comes, Nicodemus comes saying, you have to be from God, because nobody could do these miracles. Um, if he didn't come from God. And we'll talk about that. Is that is that right or, or isn't it? So um, uh, we'll, we'll talk about it right now. So is that was he right? What? That it, that someone who does miracles must be from God. Mm -hmm. Are there other um, uh, other causes of a miracle? What? Yeah. Satan. Satan can do mighty works, right? Um, so, not necessarily. It might appear to be a miracle, and it might have had a natural cause, even though it looks like a miracle. Um, or it could be of God. Um, so, um, Nicodemus thought that, that someone who, who did miracles, that was a sure sign or sure proof that uh, that he was from God. Um, but as you mentioned, and we see this in 2 Corinthians, I don't think I put that in there. Okay, I didn't put up it. But in, in 2 Corinthians 11, uh, verses 13 and 14, it talks about how uh, Satan and, and demons can mimic miracles. They can be deceptive in that way. Uh, and in 2 uh, Thessalonians, Paul writes that, that Antichrist will be a miracle. It certainly isn't Jesus, cert certainly isn't from God, but will be a miracle worker. Um, and uh, in 1 John 4, uh, John talks about testing the spirits, uh, and, and we're not to believe everything we see or hear. We're not to, to attach something uh, to God that we don't know for sure is is from God, um, and so uh, it, it, it should have. Uh, it, it was not. It, it was not that the miracles that were different about Jesus. There were other miracle workers in that day. Uh, it was his message. His message was completely new um, and uh, and almost foreign to the Jews. Um, and so that's what made him different. Now, I'm going to also add something here. Miracles make very poor evidence for God. I'm going to say that again. Miracles make very poor evidence for God. Why do you think that is? There are miracle workers out there that are just toxic. They're putting someone in a wheelchair and paying them to pretend to not be able to walk and get up and walk. Hucksters. That, that term. But the other reason that miracles make poor evidence is that, as we see in the Gospel of John, it doesn't lead to faith, lasting faith. Everywhere. As miracles, it leads to 
What is it in that? What are you going to do now? The, the, the day after the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus is in the, the, the synagogue in Capernaum, that picture we saw. And they say, what miracle are you going to do so that you can prove it to me? And I'm sure he was like, hilarious. Are you full at the end of that? Uh, it just leads to a desire. I want more. I want more. I want more. Give me more. But it's like a toddler. You know, you get toddler videos or something like that. They can just like snap them in their mouth and they're on their on their forehead and then they're just, you know, not, this this means more in sign language and this is what my kids learn and they they'd be in their in their high chair going like this, like I want more, I want more, I want more. And that's that's what happens with miracles. People just want more. Um, so um, and, and then let's talk a little bit about so that's miracles as, as evidence. Um, and and uh, Nicodemus came at night saying, we know that you're from God, um, for no one can do these signs that uh, that you do unless God is with him. And he's, he's not accurate about that, for the reasons I've already uh, mentioned. And then miracles as discernment. Um, we're told in 1 John 4, as I mentioned, uh, to test the spirits, to see whether they actually come from God. If somebody, I don't care how spectacular somebody is, I don't care how powerful a preacher is, if what that person is preaching is opposed to the word of God, that is a false teacher. That is not a teacher. To um, and you have to test, what are we testing the spirits? What are we testing teachers against? The word of God. The truth of God. Um, and uh, so, uh, well, the first one is the test. Um, back in the 80s, I know, ancient history. Um, it hasn't seen that long ago for me. I'm old. Um, there were a number of very well known evangelists um, who, one after the other, um, were found to be serial and faithful to their wives or uh, pretending to, to, have, to have miracles that weren't true or false teaching on a bunch of things. And, and one by Jimmy Swagger. Um, uh, Yeah, big Jim Bakers, one after another, they fell. And every time that happened, was the church believed and outsiders believed that they were believers, that they were that they spoke for God. People fell away from the faith of God, uh, and it, 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 it harms the body of Christ when. Men and women who are not living out their faith, none of us know their faith, but not living out our faith become these doorways for the gospel. And, and their preaching is suspect, and their lives are even more suspect. So that, that's the test of character. Uh, my pastor, if I could brag on him now, um, is, is such a humble, unassuming guy. You talk to him, he's, he's really an angel. And if you talk to him, he's just this quiet, uh, like I said, unassuming guy. Uh, and he speaks the truth of God. Uh, but you wouldn't, if you just met him on the street, you wouldn't say, well, that guy, that guy's a pastor, that guy's a preacher. You wouldn't. But in his, and, and, and one of the things I love the most is life is a dear friend. And, and she said once, we have a Monday morning prayer meeting that she leads, so we had that this morning. And one of those times, she just said, one of the things I love the most about Jeff, her husband, is that what you see on the platform is exactly who he is. There's no difference. I, I could say the same for my own father. That's character. Character means that you are the same. Comes from this word for metallurgy. If if it was pure all the way through from from the middle all out, it was it was pure. Then it had integrity. That's what integrity means. That you act the same way at home that you do at work, that you do at church, that you do at school. You're not playing a plastic. 
And so when people come with miracles or come with a message, we need to know that these are, are men and women of integrity, of care. And then the test of the written word. Does it match up with scripture? I don't care how, how good it sounds. I don't care how much you like it. I don't care how much you want it to be true. If it doesn't line up with the word of God, it is not. Um, and uh, we have to know God's word in order to do that. I think some people are, are misled because they just want to listen to God. And it sounds good. Ladies in the back. Um, and so um, it, it doesn't matter how spectacular the message is or the miracle is, it doesn't line up with the Word of God. It's not. Um, and, and in order to know that, we need to know the Word of God, which is why if we don't know the Word of God, we are sitting there. Because we don't know it's true. Um, so the message in this case from Jesus was, you must be born again. Um, and this is this is the central me message that, that Jesus gave to Nicodemus. Uh, and we see so many great truths in those few words, you must be born again. Uh, and so we're going to talk about some of what we see here. Um, the, the importance of uh, of the new birth. You see the importance of the, uh, the new birth. It's the first subject that Jesus discussed. The first thing he said to Nicodemus after Nicodemus said, you've got to be from God. He says, you've got to be born again. Um, and, and oftentimes, um, first things are important. Oftentimes, the first subject um, someone brings up is the most important. And that happens a lot in John. Um, and, and in Jesus' um, ministry, that he cut to the chase. There wasn't any, you know, my dear friends, I'm so happy you're here. It's like, oh, he must be going for me. Uh, and often that happens. The first thing that Jesus said is he says is what uh, he wants us to know. And then he gives it, um, he give, gives it a verbal emphasis. Uh, in your curriculum, it, it calls it verily, verily. Well, I'm, I'm verily sure that we don't use those words anymore. Uh, so, uh, truly, truly, uh, I tell you the truth, um, is what Jesus is saying. He's emphasizing. Look, listen to this. Um, there's, um, there, there's a preacher, he's actually retired now. He's one of my husband's favorite. His name's Charles Stanley. I, you might have heard of Andy Stanley. It's Charles. He's Andy Stanley's uh, dad. And when he, he was a preacher on the radio and on TV for years and years. And uh, when he wanted people to listen, he'd say, now listen, now listen. And, and that was the clue to like, like something important is going to be said. Well, truly, truly was what Jesus said. Truly, truly, listen to what I have to say. And then he says, you must be born again. And we find tw 20 of these, uh, this double truly. Uh, in the Gospel of John. Uh, so Jesus has a lot to say uh, in that. Uh, there's a little uh, video, that'll be your dog tomorrow, a little video that emphasizes this point too. I don't know if we have time to queue it up now, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll do that. Uh, we'll do that tomorrow. And he says that, that we, you must be born again. There is no other way to heaven uh, without this new birth. Uh, it is a, a prerequisite of heaven. So now let's talk about um, the nature of the new birth. And we see this in verses 3 through 8. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus, an Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. So the first thing about this new birth is it is not physical. To be born again has nothing to do with going back into your mother's womb or uh, physical birth. 
the question um, of, uh, of Nicodemus uh, prompted Christ to respond about another birth. Um, and it's interesting because born again is how we usually see this, right? But that word again is in the, in the Greek in which this was written is anathen. And to be born anothen can mean born again. But it also can mean born anew. And it also can mean, and you want to know this, by the way, it can also mean born anew, and it can mean born from above. Are all three of those true of, of a new birth in Christ? You're born again, you're born from above, uh, and you're born a new. Uh, and I think that word was chosen specifically uh, because this new word is so completely other uh, from anything else. Um, now, he says that we have to be born um, of water and the spirit. Uh, I'm going to tell you what this says, but I'm going to add to it pretty significantly. Maybe doesn't get it. So, uh, so what, do, what does it mean, born of water? It could mean physical birth. So, born physically and of the spirit, born uh, spiritually. And that's possible. I'm not sure that, that that's it. But, and then, uh, cleansed by the washing of water and by the word, and that would be possibly be the word of God. Um, and it, it is it, that is possible, but I'm going to give you a little bit different take on that when we when we do. Um, but what what is absolutely for certain is that Jesus's point to Nicodemus is that this is a different kind of thing. He's not talking about physical birth. He's talking about something else. Uh, and so uh, in in that sense, it is spiritual. We are born of the spirit. That which is born of flesh is flesh. And that which is born of spirit, and notice the, the, uh, the capital S, the Holy Spirit, uh, is spirit. Um, so he's not referring, obviously not referring to any sort of physical birth, but something spiritual. Um, and uh, no, because that would have been completely anachronistic. I would ask anachronism is something that is out of place in time. Was there any baptism at this point? There was John's baptism, but was there a Christian baptism? So uh, that would have they they wouldn't have even understood what he was talking about, at least in the sense of the Christian baptism. Um, but some scholars. All of the authorities of my uh, bachelor's degree in social studies education. Yeah, so uh, John's baptism was just a baptism into uh, God, and um, it, it, it couldn't have been one, I baptize you in. So, um, so uh, it was just a, a, a right of initiation. You know, um, I don't know for sure. I, I think this is an amazing. Um, but um, and for Jesus was his entry into public um, So we are born in the flesh once, um, but only, only the Holy Spirit can give us new birth. Can give us this new birth. Um, 
Uh, it is a work of the Spirit, as, as verse 8 tells us. Uh, and we see another um, uh, we see another uh, use of this, too, in Titus 3. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, not by righteous works <coughs> but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Christ, Jesus Christ our Savior. Now, this is problematic um, because uh, we are not saved by baptism. And some people take this as saved. Um, but but that, there's nothing we can do to save ourselves. Um, but baptism is... Um, uh, is we're told we're commanded to believe and be baptized, uh, and so uh, that isn't how we're saved, but it is the evidence, or it is a step uh, to show our salvation and for us, the outwardly what God has done in us. In the world. So at this point. Nicodemus is incredulous. He doesn't understand. He, he can't figure this out. And so he's just amazed. How can these things be? Uh, he just doesn't get it. Um, and one commentator said, what Jesus is teaching violated every prejudice and overthrew every immediate hope of this aged man. He, Jesus is telling him, look, I don't care how godly you are. I don't care how intelligent you are. I don't care how powerful you are, you can't save yourself. And if there was anyone on the planet that could get by on merit, on their own merit, it probably would have been Nicodemus. And Jesus is saying, I'm not. Um, and that blew Nicodemus. Um, so Nicodemus came thinking about Jesus' miracle. No miracles, but he left thinking about Jesus' which was far more important uh, than, than the miracles. Uh, so we'll um, So then he talks about the necessity of the new birth. Um, and this is uh, Peter speaking. Uh, in Acts 4, and he says, And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name other than Jesus under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Jesus is the only way. Um, he, he, and he says that, I am the way. He says that in John. Uh, and so there is salvation in, in no one else. There is no other name by which we can be saved. And we don't like to hear that truth. And a lot of people don't like to hear that truth. Well, that's exclusive. Well, he should give us more ways. If you only had one way out of the fire, would you have more ways out? Well, you'd be rushing to get to the one way, wouldn't you? Uh, and you'd be grateful for the one way. God did not have was under no obligation to save us. He didn't have to save us. But God, in his grace and his mercy, chose to do so. Chose to provide a way. And he didn't have to. So, uh, it is necessary. Uh, there is no other way to God. Uh, and then the imperative. Imperative means the command of the new birth. You must be born again. You can't get around it. You can't cheat your way up. You can't find um, a different answer. You must be born again in order to know God. It's not a suggestion, it's a command. Uh, you must be born again. And then the provision of the new birth. Jesus' death on the cross. 
Um, and in verses 14 through 18, um, it talks about that. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, and whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son. Um, so, um, Jesus is the only way, and this is why he came into the world. Uh, is, uh, God incarnate, he came in flesh to save us from our, from our sins, yes, but also from our sins. Um, and uh, it is the only way. Talk there, it's going to read. Uh, and this is the last little bit, so we'll finish that tomorrow, and you'll take the uh, you'll take the quiz.